cries out. Good morning, everyone. It's a wonderful morning this morning. Um, so if you haven't noticed, we are going to be leading you in worship this morning. And we wanted to bring you some songs um, from church camp, some of our favorites. Um, so church camp was a really awesome experience, and a lot of that was because of the worship um, and how it got us hyped up and helped us connect with the Lord. So we hope that we can share a little bit of that with you all this morning. So if you wouldn't mind, would you stand up? <laughs> To We're going to teach you a bit of a dance. Yes. We got, we got, we got, we got to give you the full church camp experience. Shout, shout in the river. 
Morning. Now I'm supposed to come up with, you can be seated now. Now I need to come up with a welcome to top that, right? Mike Smith, if you're sleeping this morning, you really need to check into those hearing aids. <laughs> I'd like to welcome everybody to Community Church this morning, whether you're worshiping in the pews, at home, or maybe on a remote island in the Atlantic Ocean. Hopefully, um, this service will be meaningful to you and your relationship with Jesus Christ. A few announcements. The Finance Committee meeting postponed for tomorrow night. Um, date to be determined. Is that correct, Mr. Chairman? Okay. Uh, a couple other announcements in the bulletin. Still um, spots open for the mission trip. Contact Natalie Burkhart for that. Uh, we've got a KEDA event coming up on July 31st, and I think um, Holly Dale. Ha oh, there she is. Come on up, Holly. It's that time of year again for the KEDA backpack program. Uh, KEDA stands for Kids Equipped to Achieve, and the goal is for every child to have a backpack and help them to achieve. If you would like to donate, please bring backpacks to the church starting today. Uh, we already have some in the back. Uh, the last day for dropping them off is Sunday, July 5th, which is next Sunday. So if you get here next Sunday and you thought, oh, I forgot my backpack, Monday and Tuesday are fine. So, so bring them in. Also, they want you to know uh, to bring backpacks only and do not bring the supplies. Um, other opportunities that you can help with this, the actual event, as Jim said, is July 31st at Greg Park at the Washington Learning Academy, which we know is Washington Elementary School. Uh, they are asking volunteers to come at 9.30 a.m. for prayer and instruction in the gym, and then 10 to 1 kids are escorted through the supplies. Uh, after the event, they are asking also for assistance in cleanup. You do not have to stay the whole time, so if you on that Saturday have a half hour or an hour that you have some free time, they would just love to have your help. Uh, also, if you would like to help during the week, that week, uh, they will be preparing and stuffing backpacks and handling the supplies on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 1 to 3. The info is also in the bulletin and in the newsletter. Thank you very much for making a child smile. And Lori Graham has announcement at this time. The missions committee actually asked me to speak about the mission trip that's coming up to the Midwest Distribution Center. Some of us went a few years ago, and if you think that a mission trip's not for you or there's a lot of things you can't do, this is kind of a different um, type of mission trip, and there is really um, a job for everyone. And I'm going to read actually from their website what they say they, they do. And, you know, it may click something that you're like, oh, I didn't realize they did that there. Um, and maybe I could go. Um, missionaries pack kits. Those are like the flood kits and the hygiene kits that we collect items for sometimes. One of those items that you do is they have to roll out so many trash bags. And I know Jean and Carol spent a lot of time counting trash bags and rolling those up. But it's a job you can do sitting down at a table. So if you can't stand up, that's a great job for you. Um, they sew school bags, hospital gowns, and quilts. Uh, missionaries box goods, which we did some of that, help with mailing, um, build crates and desks. They take repurposed um, bleachers. So if you know of a high school that's redoing their bleachers and they want somebody to come and get their bleachers out of there, they will actually take those and they make desks out of them to send to um, Haiti, Jamaica, places like that. And we actually, I got to spend one of my afternoons there upstairs in that place um, actually polyurethane the desk so that was a job I could do I can paint that's okay um, they repair bicycles so if you have any bicycle knowledge they actually take old bicycles that maybe just need a new tire maybe new brakes they repair them there and they give them to foster children 
So they have a big event once a year where foster children can come and get a bike, or if in that area of Springfield, Illinois, they can actually call and say, hey, you know, we have two new foster kids that were placed with us. We'd like a bike, and they could come and pick up bikes there. Um, they actually collect old sewing machines, and they fix those while they're there and send them to countries um, so that people can learn new skills. Uh, they fill shipping containers, organize materials. Um, there are opportunities for those with special skills trades and those at peak abilities, as well as opportunities for individuals who may be more limited. So if all you can do is sit there, you can pack kids. Um, so, you know, I would ask that you be in prayer about going. It's an, it's an amazing facility over there. We had a great time when we went. Um, there really was a job for everyone. So if you are interested, make sure you contact Natalie for that. Thanks. John. Good morning, and thank you for being here today. This group back here represents the energy of the church. Uh, Jim and I represent the energy less <laughs> of the church here this morning. But give them a hand. They did a great job this morning. Yeah. Let's open with prayer. Father, we are grateful. We thank you for the privilege that we have of coming here today and to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray your presence with us that each of us who are here might hear your voice, might uh, be able to draw you closer to each other and certainly be able to leave here today feeling that we are next to you and care more about one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand and worship with us this morning.
Okay, thank you. Lori, do we have camper testimonies? Bruce, okay. I'm just going to share just a couple minutes for you what camp meant to me. I heard people talk about they had fun at camp. Uh, I had fun, but it was more than just fun. We had an experience. These kids were wonderful. I call them kids. These young adults are wonderful. Uh, it was an experience for me. Uh, I did not know what to expect. Uh, but that song, the first song they sang about deeper water, we're all called to go to deeper water. Uh, we, we play in a kiddie pool a lot, but we don't know what it's like to get out there. And uh, I believe these kids are going to get out there. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to get out there and do some things too. So uh, I hope as a church we can all Strive to get out into the deeper water and don't get comfortable in the kiddie pool. Uh, it was quite an experience, and I would recommend it to anybody. I mean, I'm almost 60, and I felt like I was 20 when I was there. So I was tired when I got back. Were you guys tired? Yeah. <laughs> I was tired. It took me a couple days to get caught up, but uh, that was probably one of the best experiences of my life as far as being spiritually renewed. And we're not going to let it end with that week, right? right. We're going to carry it on. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you for allowing me to go. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Bruce. Um, time in the service for joys and concerns. I think an obvious joy is our youth this morning. Um, being willing to share their talents and their witness this morning. You, I, when you watch them, you can tell uh, they're not being forced to be up there. They're truly enjoying themselves and worshiping the Lord. And we kind of got both ends of the spectrum because we've got the young at heart that is with us this morning, still willing to share his talent. Um, uh, with us in worship this morning. So I just want to thank Ray for being here um, again. <clears throat> As you, you may know, the pastor and his family are on vacation this week. They promised they'd be watching, so we'll uh, give a them a little wave and wish them travel mercies and hope they can return home safely. Um, and as is often the case, sometimes our concerns are also joys. Um, Galen Cobfelder passed away this week, and my um, watched my dad live without his wife for several years. And so, while we certainly grieve with the Cobfelder family, it's a joy that he and Sonny are uh, reunited again. Um, he passed away July 16th. Visitation will be Monday from four to eight at Goodwin Funeral Home. And Tuesday morning from 9.30 to 10.30 here at the church, the funeral will be, will be at 10.30 uh, here at the church with Ray Tromley officiating. <clears throat> Mary Dale's funeral was last Tuesday. We ask that you please keep that family in your prayers. Um, Ellen Hill remains in Good Samaritan Hospital in the ICU. They are continuing to run tests and adjusting her medications. She is improving and may be discharged today, but please keep Ellen in your prayers. Leah Bland and Faye Bilski still at Gentle Care for stroke rehab, and we've still got a long list in the bulletin to continue to pray for those in assisted living and nursing homes. I'd like to add to that um, the Mark Dillon family. Um, 
several of you may be close to them. He's battled cancer for the last year, passed away. Their visitation is today and funeral tomorrow. And <clears throat> one more that I'd like to add, um, my brother-in-law, Sean, lost a cr close friend from high school, died suddenly uh, this weekend. That's the Craig Wilson family from the Crawfordsville area. So I'd like for you to keep them in your prayers too, please. Does anybody have anyone else? Now, please pray with me. <clears throat> Gracious God, we pause at this time to give you thanks for your many blessings. We thank you for the sunshine and the rain. May you continue to give us just what we need. We pray for travel mercies for our pastor and his family. May they be truly blessed with their time away and return home safely. Please be with Ray and each and every one in worship this morning. May we all draw closer to you. <clears throat> you know us inside and out, and yet you still call us to serve you. Empower us to listen for and to hear your call. Lord, give us courage and strength. We pray for your compassion and healing for all those individuals in our congregation who need it. We pray for your comfort and presence for those who are grieving, lonely, and oppressed. Lord, help us to be your servants, willing to preach your word, offer care where care is needed, and presence when presence is needed. And your love where your love is needed. And now we lift up the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We come this morning to receive uh, God's Spirit into our lives. We come this morning to give something of ourselves. And so we pray as you give your offering today that God's blessing is certainly on each and every one of you. Let's take up the offering this morning.
Father, again, we are grateful for those who have been willing to come and to give, to serve, and to be here to help in worship time today. And we just pray that you use the offering that is brought here today and the lives and the hearts of the people to spread the good news of the gospel throughout this area. And so we just thank you for the gifts, and we thank you for your presence in our life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now I think we have time for children's message. Yeah, here she comes. Come one, come all. And if any of you, the rest of you, since our crew is slim anymore, if anyone feels the desire because are we not all children of God? So we need to start filling in the empty spaces. So we need anyone to come down. Good morning. So I have a question for you. Did you know that the state of Indiana has a, a state insect. I just found this out this morning. I've been reading and reading and reading. Well, you know, that did you know they have a state bird and they have a state flower? And in 2018, they voted and they have a state insect. So can anyone guess or anyone out there guess what is the state insect? <laughs> well, that's a very, very good idea. Yeah. Cicada? Nope. That's a, those are good. Oh, yeah. So think about it. And I know you know they fly and they light up. Fireflies. So some people call them fireflies. Some people say lightning bugs. So what's the difference between a firefly and a lightning bug? Very good. Ding, 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 ding. You won. They're the same. Well, I'm going to talk about fireflies and lightning bugs this morning. And I love to learn. So it doesn't matter how old you are. I've been reading and reading, and I've learned so many things about lightning bugs. I always called them lightning bugs. And I think they said in the south and the midwest, we call them lightning bugs. And out west, they call them fireflies. And so they're the same thing, and I found out so many interesting things, and I'll tell you a, a few things, and then we'll get to the end of the message, because you might wonder, so for a children's message, why is she talking about lightning bugs? 
well, you'll see. It's really neat. So there are 2,000 different kinds of lightning bugs. Wow, 2,000 all over the world. There's 43 different kinds of lightning bugs that light up in Indiana. And there are only 13 of those. I said that wrong. 43 species in Indiana, only 13 light up. So why does a lightning bug light up? Do you know? Why does a lightning bug light up? Well, that, I don't think I ever read that, but that may be true. Yeah, Liemma? What? Yeah. So this is the way, I'll put it in my own words. In the grass are all these girl lightning bugs. And the boy lightning bugs are in the air. And the boys are flying along and turning their lights and saying, Will you be my girlfriend? Will you be my girlfriend? Will you be my girlfriend? And that's what the lights are. And then the girlfriend, the, the lady, is like, oh, I like the way he glows. And she glows once and she says, yes. And then you see her light up in the grass. And so then he flies down to her and they get married and they fly off and have babies and live happily ever after. Only for a couple of weeks because lightning bugs don't live very long. That's the main reason lightning bugs light up. But on the other hand, the really dark side of that, there are these lady lightning bugs that will light up and pretend they're a lightning bug and another lightning bug comes along and she eats them. So, okay, you never know what kind of lightning bug you have. But it is, it is amazing that God would make something that his bottom end lights up. And there's also glow worms. Have you ever seen a glow worm? You have, yeah. I did once, only once, in the underneath the dirt. They were glowing, and they're a different stage. So lightning bugs are worms, and they're good. <clears throat> Excuse me. For most of their life, they stay in the larva stage. And then they hatch, and then they do that. And they're really, really neat, and they're really, really good. They eat a lot of bad insects. But the reason I'm telling you is because, look at that. God made a lightning bug. Isn't it amazing? Why would God do something and make a lightning bug? It's just beyond me. So, <laughs> yeah, they don't. I used to collect them, and they don't help me see in the dark very well because I'd have them in my room at night, and they didn't do much. But it takes me, made me think of some scripture. Yeah, yeah, probably so. So it makes me think of this scripture, and I've used this scripture before, and I'll probably use it again because it's a great, great scripture. Well, God made lightning bugs, and he made tree toads, and he made, yeah, mosquitoes, and all the birds. <coughs> Gosh, I have a frog in my throat. He made all these things that are marvelous, but you know what his masterpiece was? Yeah, so it takes us to that scripture that I read you before, but it's just so, so good to remember. It's in Ephesians in the New Testament, chapter 2, verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So lightning bugs are pretty amazing, aren't they? But that wasn't God's masterpiece. It tells us we, God made all these really, really neat things, and he thought, but I'm not done. I'm going to make something that's so much better than an insect that can light up. And so I'm going to make my masterpiece. I'm going to make, and he made man and woman. And so that is so great. So what I want to do. Adam and Eve, you are correct. That's their names. Yep. But in the Bible, it just kind of says at the very beginning, it says he made man and then he made woman. So that's why I said it that way. But what I want to do, and this is for everyone that can hear my voice, because we kind of did this before. Whether you're at home, alone, I want everyone and everyone here to say it out loud. I am God's masterpiece. I am God's masterpiece. 
I was made to do good things. I was made to good to faith. For him. For him. Yeah, that's the reason we were made. He made us a masterpiece, not just because, eh, I'm just going to make this thing and, and that's that. He made us to do good things for him. That's. But we never do bad things. You never, <laughs> you never do bad things. Well, great. I'm glad. <laughs> that's amazing. He made you amazing. So that's something we always, because I'll probably use this scripture again because God gives me these ideas of ways to kind of get the message across. And so, yeah. So what I wanted, what I got here, and what was interesting, what I was reading about is, is glow sticks. You're all familiar with glow sticks? Yes. Do you know that it said that they use the solution that makes a lightning bug glow, they make it in, in synthetic form, and that they use them in glow sticks. Now, isn't that amazing? Now, you can each have, this is the strain to make it a lanyard, and if I would have opened it up ahead of time, I would have had this all done for you. So each take a string and each take a glow stick. Okay. I don't know what colors they end up. And there's just enough for each of you. And you can, and so these will still glow tonight. I know you can't see them very well. These will still glow tonight. Oh, here. So I want, when you think about, when you see these, you can take them in your room at night. Do you have one of the tops? Oh. When you take them in your room at night, think about that. Think about how God made you a masterpiece, okay? So I want to say a prayer before you go to prayer and praise, and I want you to repeat after me. And so since there's just so few kids, I need everyone in here to repeat after me. So let's go to God in prayer. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. Help us to remember that we are a masterpiece. And you made us to do good things for you. Amen. Okay, you can go.
Meredith, yeah, can you remove your stuff and put on there? And let's move that. Appreciate that. Thanks. Give an old man a moment to get ready here, if you will. It's running a little late this morning, but uh, bear with us if you can. I was in Dr. Kirkhoff's office a few months ago, and the nurse was directing me back to that dreaded scale to weigh me. And Dr. Kirkhoff was walking behind me, and uh, he said, what are you limping about? I turned around and looked at him, and I said, well, you know my history. I said, four total hip replacements and three major back surgeries gives me the right to limp. <laughs> and then since that time, we've added a removed gallbladder, a heart attack, three stents put in to plug me up, and six months of trying to recover from what's been going on physically. I think about Don Palmer, who the old teacher from Decker High School, who gave us those famous words about uh, sometimes when you ask people how they are, they think that that gives them the right to give you their whole medical history. And I didn't mean to do that this morning. But certainly it's the reason why I'm sitting down. If I stood here today, my legs probably wouldn't last that long and somebody would have to come and pick me up. So it's better that I sit. We want to share with you some scripture this morning from first the Old Testament and uh, a little bit from the New. But uh, Joshua, who took Moses' place, was giving some last instructions and thoughts to the people of Israel as he was checking out uh, nearing the end of his time. And he had these words to say to them and to you and I. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Draw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems un desirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And then I go to... Uh, book of Exodus to, uh, to the Ten Commandments. And I think sometimes we have uh, decided that this is not an important part of Scripture. <laughs> we really don't want to pay attention to it. It's old hat and leave it alone. But uh, these were God's word to Moses on Mount Sinai some 35, 600 years ago. And we hear those words today, and I'm going to skip through a couple of those verses in the middle of this, but I want you to hear the commandments today. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. 
for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Skipping down to verse 12, it says, Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land. The Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And then I think about what Jesus uh, said back here in the Gospel of Matthew. And he had been challenged by the Sadducees of that day a little before this time, and they had taken him to task, and Jesus kind of set them aside for a little bit. And the Pharisees came forward to try to trip him up as well. And hearing hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest kingdom in the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first of the greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you for the privilege of being able to share here this morning, and we pray your presence with us, and certainly with myself, as I think through the thoughts of these last weeks and share together today. So we just pray your presence with us in a very special way. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you, and I'd like a show of hands, uh, are old enough to remember when Jackie Gleason was on TV? Yeah. Do any of you young folks know who Jackie Gleason was? He was a comedian and a character, uh, certainly, who lived in our time. And Jackie Gleason had a sidekick. Uh, Frankie Fontaine was the uh, real name of the man, but he played two different parts on the Jackie Gleason show. One, he was Joe the bartender. And another, he was Crazy Guggenheim, the town drunk. (laughs) So, anyway... What I was thinking about today and being here with you, I th- remembered one of the incidents on Jackie Gleason when Frankie Fontaine was playing uh, Guggenheim, the, the drunk man. And he said that, uh, telling Jackie this story, he said, my son came to me last night to ask me some questions. And he said, Dad, do you mind me asking you some questions? And he said, no, son, you're far away. Now, I don't remember what those questions really were. It's been several years ago since I saw that. But it would be something like this. uh, Dad, why is the earth round? And crazy Guggenheim kind of looked at the side a little bit and shook his head and thought and thought and finally said, well, son, I have to admit I don't know. I can't tell you the answer to that and his son said well dad why is the sky blue Frankie held his head down and shook his head and looked around a while and finally said I'm sorry son but I can't tell you I don't know the answer to that a couple of more questions went on and finally his son said to him well dad do you mind me asking you all these questions And he said, well, no, son, how do you expect to learn anything? (laughs) Well, I say that because as I was thinking about this morning, I don't want any questions, okay? (laughs) I may not be able to answer your theological uh, questions that you might have today. 
But as I was thinking a few weeks ago after Pastor Darren asked me if I would come and share a little bit with you this morning what to talk about. And I had got, as most of us do on Facebook, and I happened to pull up uh, some comments by our farmer music director, uh, Jennifer Harris. Like to read the things she has to say. She's a bright lady and has a lot to offer, I think, to uh, the conversation that we might have. But she was about to attend a Bible class there at where she is going to school. And she came up with this thought that this professor who was going to lead this Bible study said prior to starting the class, he said that Christians today have become slaves and sold out to the oughts and nots that have been handed down to them. And we live with the idea that these thoughts were authentic scripture interpretations. And he goes on to say that, uh, do we ever stop and think, is it worthwhile to do that? Well, when I read that, I thought about the oughts and the nots came to my mind and it, in kind of a negative sort of way. And yet, as I began to think, I thought, well, there probably could come some kind of a good discussion about what has happened to Christianity over the years because why do we have so many denominations? Why do we have so many splits in the church and so forth? And it's probably because of disagreement over interpretation of scripture or those kinds of things. And we have been laid on ourselves a lot of things to live by that others have told us are the authentic gospel truth. <laughs> so we need to research some of that. But the more I thought about that, I thought, the oughts and nots, there's nothing wrong with that, is it? When I think back to the Ten Commandments, when I think back to the thought that God gave to you and I about how we might live our lives each and every day, and how do you as parents teach your kids well, you ought to do this. This is good for you to do. You ought not to do that because that's not good for you to do. Isn't that the way it happens? Isn't that what we ought to do? And even though I thought a little bit about the comment that we are sold out to those oughts and nots, that maybe, just maybe, we ought to be sold out to the oughts and nots of the Ten Commandments. <laughs> We have given up in one sense. We are not willing to let the major law of God enter our hearts and lives in such a way and giving our lives to that. So I had to go back and kind of review the Ten Commandments a little bit. And I thought at the beginning, uh, I don't know, did I, yeah, I read Jesus' words from uh, the gospel this, this morning from the gospel of Matthew and he said when asked which is the greatest commandment he said to love the Lord your God with all your mind your heart your soul and your strength and love your neighbor as yourself is the second commandment and when I thought about that I thought yeah there are some oughts and nots there too, some things that we ought to do to love God and love our neighbor. That's important for us to do. The first commandment that God gave to Moses on the mountain was that he is God and the only God and we worship only him. And you and I ought to sell ourselves out to that fact. It is a fact and we ought to believe that. But in today's world, how many people are telling us there is no God, that he doesn't exist, that these words are not important, that you can do whatever you please because it's not important what God said 3,600 years ago or whatever. And yet, I believe that it is and I believe that we need to listen to that commandment. 
said, do not misuse the name of the Lord in vain. How many times have you and I heard swear words or people carrying on frivolously about God and the things of God? And you wonder when we listen to this and understand God's word that that is something that we ought not to do. <laughs> we ought not to participate in that. He tells us to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. That's a positive thing to do. I think that's the reason why you and I are here today. We are here to observe this moment in time of this week when we can come and open up our hearts and our minds to listen to the voice of God to speak to us and to try to remember the things that he wants us and says that we ought to do and not to do the things that he tells us not to do. So remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. Wow. Some of that going on in our world today, isn't it? And there's even uh, uh, teaching things happening in our schools and so forth that are telling us not to honor our parents, to walk away from that, uh, to let that go. The family's not important. By golly, when I am here listening and looking and looking at these kids today uh, and singing and being a part of the church here this morning, the family is so important, and we need to remember that. And I think deep in the heart of God, when he said, honor your father and your mother, he meant that all of us to honor one another. The children honor their parents. Parents honor your children. Hang in there together. Life is tough enough, but hang in there together with each other. But he goes on with most of the knots that are there. And I thought they hit my heart pretty heavy this week. You shall not kill. You shall not murder. And I think back to this last year and a half in our country. And I think about the riots. And I think about how many people were killed in these days. And how many leaders and other people in the world we're okay with that. It's like it's just happening. Some people are unhappy and they're just showing their unhappiness and that's okay. Well, it's not okay. And we ought to be able to sell out to the thought that what God said is true. You shall not kill. You can't turn on the television and see the news of the cities in our country today where this weekend, particularly, there's going to be numerous murders, numerous people killed and shot senselessly. No reason for it, but just simply doing it. It's against the law. It's against the law of the land. It's certainly against God's law. And you and I ought to buy into that, not for sure, in our lives. We should not commit adultery. Wow, another toughie at times for people in life. But he's telling us that, both young and old alike. You shall not steal. Well, didn't we grow up kind of thinking that was so, we shouldn't do that? And yet when I looked at the people running out of the stores in the riot days, taking whatever they wanted, just what the heck? It, uh, it's meaningless. And I think we have given up on the Ten Commandments. We have given up on right and wrong. I think uh, Justin had played a little earlier, maybe showed on the screen, that statement from uh, Booker T. Washington that Booker T. said, a lie never becomes the truth. And wrong never becomes right. And evil never becomes good. Even if a majority of the people say it's okay. And I think we are there in our time in history today. And we have to stand up for what is good and what is right. And sell out to the good commandments. Sell out to the Ten Commandments. Sell out 
to God saying to you and I, live the life the way you should. It'll be much easier for you than going the other direction. I heard uh, a little bit on TV by the, uh, one of the leaders of Black Lives Matter uh, who had said, and I remember that quite well, if we do not get our way, we will burn you down. And they attempted to do that uh, in many things, uh, in many of the cities of our country in this past year. If I don't get my way, I'm going to burn you out. I heard it the other day said that uh, be careful in asking to get your own way because you might get it and then you're going to have to live with the consequences of that for the rest of your life. So because you get your own way may not be the sweetest way out of all of this, but being obedient to the will of God in our lives is important for you and I to do. And going back to the basic things, now I love Jennifer, I love, uh, she did a wonderful job when she was here, and I appreciate her learnedness of being there. But I think sometimes we are trying to learn so deeply into things that we simply forget the basics. We simply walk away from the simpleness of the way God would have us to lead life in order that life might be good for you and I and peaceful and kind and doing for others as we would have them do to ourselves. So this morning, if we could just leave you with that thought, simple life is simpler than we are making it to be. It has become more and more complicated because of our ability to communicate faster than the speed of lightning. <laughs> and we hear so much and so many things and we're drug in so many different directions. But we ought not to leave this direction alone. We ought not to put this aside and say with some people that God's not important, that it doesn't matter what he says. He's old hat. We have learned how to do things better in our time in life. And I guarantee you, if we follow that trail, the consequences of that will find us sadly being out here in a world that we don't want to live in. And so take that to heart today. Remember what Jesus said to the Pharisees when asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he replied to them, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And the second is likened to it. Love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. And if we do that, simply said, life will be much better for you and I. So I challenge us all today, if we've got time to pick up the good book, <laughs> to go back and to look and to think about the commandments, the nots and the oughts that we ought to do and not ought to do, and be able to say, God, I trust in you. I know what you said to Moses was true for me today as well as it was for the people of Israel in that time. So please help me, give me the strength to listen to your voice to hear those words loud in my ears so that each day when I have the chance, I will do the right and the righteous things. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we are grateful. It has been a wonderful world that we've lived in. It's not without its challenges. It's not without its opportunities for us to walk away from you. But Lord, we pray today that uh, we will find some time in our lives to take a moment to appreciate you in such a way, to love you with all of our hearts, mind, soul, and strength, and to be able to get along better with our neighbors. Perhaps, maybe, the word might ought to have been that not, uh, 
not just to bear false witness against your neighbor, but not against your political enemy as well. So, because we are about that today. So go with us this week in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand and worship with us for our closing song.
Well, it is a glorious day, and we pray that as you leave here in that light, that you'll remember that life is much easier if you do the things you ought to do and don't do the things you ought not to do. But go with his blessing and know that his word is always true for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace.